Hello, welcome to Long Arm Dash Tech, where our mission is to delight discerning quilters by enabling them to optimize the performance of their long arm machines and frames. My name is Keith, and today we will show you how to check for the proper performance of a bobbin brake spring and how to change it if needed. Please note these springs go by a couple of other names, such as bobbin case springs or bobbin anti-backlash springs. Here is a bobbin in a bobbin case. When I gently push the bobbin down, and release the bobbin, the spring pushes it back up slightly above the top of the rim. If your bobbin doesn't bounce back quickly or at all when you do that, then you've got a weak or potentially missing spring. These springs are only a few dollars and are readily available from your retailer or the manufacturer. I encourage all long armors to keep a couple spares in your studio. I'm going to put up a picture to better show the orientation of the bobbin case rim and the top edge of the bobbin. This bobbin is not above the rim of the case, and when I push it, there is no bounce, indicating a weak or missing bobbin spring. The purpose of the bobbin spring is to provide enough tension between the bobbin and the case to keep the bobbin from rotating incorrectly on the hook shaft and causing backlashing, which would mean your bobbin thread would have loops in the back of the quilt. If you've ever used an open reel fishing rod, your thumb on the reel when you cast it serves the same purpose, to keep the line from backlashing. These springs are under pressure anytime the bobbin is inserted and will eventually weaken and become flat. In addition to keeping a spare or two, you should consider removing the bobbin if you're not going to be using your long arm for a while to take the pressure off the spring and increase its lifespan. If you have a bad or missing spring, they are quick and easy to replace. Let's see what it takes to swap one out. To get started, let's pull the bobbin out of the case and we're going to need a sharp tool, something like a precision screwdriver or a toothpick will work just fine. You need to put it underneath the bobbin spring and gently pull up and the spring will come right out. You will note that the bobbin spring has tabs on either side of it, pointing at with my finger on one side and then the other. I'm going to put up a picture to better show them. These tabs go into slots in the bobbin case to anchor the spring to the bobbin case so it won't spin. Before installing, please ensure the new spring is identical to the old spring in the location and size of the tabs. There are several different types of hooks and hook manufacturers, and occasionally the springs can get mixed up at the dealer or in shipping. For more information on the types of bobbin case springs, please go to the Long Arm Dash Tech website. We have a write-up with lots of good pictures and information on it. Another way to tell if your bobbin case spring is weak is to place it on a flat surface and test its bounce, along with looking at how far above the surface the middle of the spring is. On the left, you see a worn out spring that is almost totally flat and has no bounce. Uh, on the right, this spring bounces and has plenty of room underneath it that you can slide a screwdriver and not touch the top part of the spring, about a millimeter or so. I'm gonna put up a picture that will give you a better perspective. A spring at rest that measures about two to three millimeters from top to bottom, has enough strength to keep appropriate pressure against the bobbin and bobbin case to prevent backlash to the thread. To install the new spring, orient it so that the center is away from the base of the bobbin case. It'll be elevated. Align one set of the tabs in the slots that the tabs go in, slide the needle over the center shaft. And you may need a screwdriver or toothpick to lock it in place. Note that once the spring is locked in place you should be able to vigorously bounce it without it popping out of the slots indicating it's made good contact. You can see the new spring is about three millimeters above the base of the rim. It actually gets put under more tension once you insert it in the case and have the tabs locked in their slots. Now you're ready to put your bobbin back in the bobbin case. Double check that it bounces well and you're ready to get back and quilt. Thanks a lot for watching Long Arm Dash Tech and quilt on.